Metal Raiders was released on June 26, 2002 and added over 140 new cards to the TCG card pool. A plethora of new effect monsters immediately saw play such as Magician of Faith, Sangen, and Witch of the Black Forest. Dark Elf and Jirai Guma were both colossal normal summons that could easily take out a La Jin or Seven Colored Fish but at a steep cost in the form of life points. Mask Sorcerer and White Magical Hat also made their debut but initially saw seldom play compared to the rest of the new monster lineup. Heavy Storm was a dark hole for spell and trap cards and instantly became a format staple alongside the Power 5. And Mirror Force was a Raigeki that could be used during the opponent's turn to punish players who wanted to get greedy with their attacks. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh's past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible, Welcome to the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah! Okay, come on, no way. You can't just throw that around, that's a... I mean, divorce is an extremely loaded term. Oh, okay, so is embarrassment. No, I'm gonna beat him! I'm gonna beat him! Listen, I'm gonna beat him. Yes, I am wearing the Shirt of Shame. No, I did not play Two Swords of Revealing Light in the last list. No, I'm gonna- listen, I'm gonna beat him, okay? Alright? So, please do not contact the lawyer, okay? Okay, uh... Bye, I guess. It's, uh... <laughs> just, uh, just a friend playing a, <laughs> a funny little prank on me, you know? Uh, you know, you know how that goes. Um, so it's week four, and I, uh, I, I haven't won, won a set yet, but we're, we're getting closer. Last week, we finally won our first game, and I think this is the week we will finally be able to turn the tides knock on wood. I am no longer being as braggadocious as possible in the intros because I know what karma is. This is the first deck that I don't feel is close to or exactly the most powerful thing you can be playing. Uh, this is the point in Yu-Gi-Oh when things start to diverge and strictly better isn't really a deck building philosophy anymore. That said, there are some pretty clear outliers in these first couple of sets, uh, most notably among them Mirror Force and Heavy Storm. These are far and away the most powerful cards in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh, but there's a little bit of complication given the format that we're playing in. So Mirror Force seems like a 3 auto include, right? It wipes your opponent's board, you can kill them on the crackback. However, the cards that you'll be destroying are largely Witch of the Black Forest and Sangan, plus flip monsters that have already resolved their effect. So it's not nearly as strong as you would expect it to be. If Mirror Force is less strong, then Heavy Storm is subsequently less strong as well. That said, for Game 1, I will be playing both Triple Mirror Force and Triple Heavy Storm, but I've spent a couple of hours labbing this format, and I think in Games 2 and 3, my matchup knowledge is going to propel me to victory. Based on what C most playing, be it Wabakus or Fissures instead of um, Mirror Forces, we can board accordingly and uh, effectively blank large parts of his strategy. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this format exactly, it is Magician of Faith Turbo. Magician of Faith is far and away the most powerful card in this format, and every single searcher gets her. We are going to chain from Witch into Sangen into uh, Magician of Faith multiple times over the course of this set. One thing that I think will give me the edge in this advantage, outside of my extremely transformative sideboard plan with uh, Solemn Judgments, Wabakus, and Soul Releases based on how aggressive Alex is being with his own Magician of Faiths, is Tribute to the Doomed. I think there's a real possibility that Alex specifically has missed this card entirely. It doesn't sound good. It's a two-for-one removal spell in a format where Mirror Force and Fissure are both legal alongside powerful singletons like Raigeki. However, Tribute to the Doomed can hit set cards, and the payoff if you hit something like Man Eater Bug or Magician of Faith before they flip, or a known copy of Wall of Illusion, is immense. Like the early formats, this is going to be a lot of setting and passing, so cards that break that stalemate like Tribute to the Doomed are going to be amazing. Let's go through the individual cards real quick, and I'll explain my methodology. Magician of Faith, of course, makes complete sense. It's the most powerful card in the format once we get our spell count rolling. Man Eater Bug is actually not fantastic, but it's really powerful as a searchable piece of removal for cards like 
like Summon Skull, and Set Monsters. Again, name of the game here is destroying cards that have not yet flipped up. We've got Sangan, of course, followed by Wall of Illusion, still the best defensive threat in the format. We're playing two White Magical Hat. I am positive Simo is playing three because of the progression series, but realistically, when you can shape what you get to play, it's only all right. It also trades very unfavorably with our next card, Witch of the Black Forest, having 100 more attack. For beaters, we're on three Seven Colored Fish and three Lajin Mystical Genie of the Lamp, both 1800s, and one Summon Skull, who we can recur a number of times provided we get Monster Reborn into the mix and are able to use uh, cards like Magician of Faith to loop it. We've got Change of Heart, we've got Dark Hole, we've got Reborn, we've got Pot, we've got Raigeki, of course. Of these, the one that we want to be looping with Magician of Faith, kind of counterintuitively, is either Reborn or Swords of Revealing Light, to our next card, Heavy Storm. Finally, we're on three Tribute to the Doomed as a fantastic removal option over Fissure, because Fissure's utility is way, way lower in a format where attacking into a set monster isn't just going to reveal a giant soldier of stone, it's also going to trigger Magician of Faith or Maneater Buck. We're also on three Mirror Force, but again, they're likely getting boarded out. In the side deck, Mask of Darkness is if the game is really, really, really slow. The third White Magical Hat, if I want to be a little more aggressive. Fissure to board out four Mirror Force if we want to blank all of Alex's Heavy Storms. Same with Soul Release if they're very aggressive with copies of Magician of Faith. Solemn Judgment if we want to go into a trap heavy build and protect ourselves against cards like Heavy Storm and Waboku for the same reason. So, I think I can do this and I have to. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metal Raiders format. Now, this is going to be a little bit different than actual Metal Raiders format because, as you can see, we are going to be playing with three copies of some of the most powerful cards in this set. There was a time before the next ban list came out where these cards were playable at three, and so, of course, we're going to play with them. That's way more exciting for you guys to witness, and we've got a great game plan going into today's duel. So, this deck is all aiming to just tempo out Joseph as much as possible. Might be a little bit high rolly, but honestly, I'm up three games to zero, so I don't really care at this point. I just want to be able to blow him out with this because his reaction will be priceless. So let's go ahead and do the rundown. Starting off with two Magician of Faith. Magician of Faith is incredible for recurring not only the power five, but also cards like Heavy Storm for a fourth or even fifth use. Like that's just absurd. So of course, Magician of Faith is going to make the cut. We're still on two copies of Maneater Bug. This is something that some decks might cut, but for the purposes of the deck that we're playing, I actually want to play multiple copies. We'll get into that a little bit later on. Mask Sorcerer is actually the opposite of White Magical Hat. White Magical Hat actually rips a card out the opponent's hand, but Mask Sorcerer actually draws a card. What's interesting about this is that it has 1400 defense, so if we set it face down and Joseph attacks into it with like Sangen or Witch of the Black Forest, not only will the monster flip up and not die, but Mask Sorcerer inflicts battle damage to the opponent, so we actually get to draw a card from that exchange. Also, it is searchable with Witch and Sangen, so if we find ourselves in an open board, we can search Mask Sorcerer and get in for 900, but also net ourselves a plus on top of it. That seems pretty good to me. We're playing three Witch, three Sangen, and of course, three copies of Wall of Illusion. Now, this might seem a bit strange because Wall of Illusion isn't necessarily the best card in this format. However, combined with Robin Goblin, this card is insane. So Robin Goblin is essentially white magical hat in a trap card, but it's continuous. So each time a monster you control inflicts battle damage to your opponent, your opponent discards one random card. This is a little bit risky in a format with Heavy Storm, but if Joseph if we're to attack into Wall of Illusion while we have Robin Goblin set, the wall will flip up, the monster will get bounced back to his hand, and will rip a card out of his hand for his troubles because no monster in this format, aside from like Dark Elf or Jurai Gumo, can actually hit over the Wall of Illusion. On our following turn, if he has no other monsters on the field, let's say this is turn one, we will then be able to switch this wall to attack position, possibly summon another monster, and rip not one, but two more cards out of Joseph's hand, Hand, obviously barring any sort of mirror force shenanigans. I'm aiming to just rip every card out of his hand imaginable and just win the game sheerly through that tempo, and this is definitely the way to do it. Next up, we have three La Jin. We still want to have some beaters in this format, and La Jin is still just the best one. Seven Colored Fish exists, but I like La Jin better because it has that extra 200 defense, and it's also just classic Kaiba. For the spells, Change of Heart, Dark Hole, only one Fisher. I'll talk about this in a second. Three Heavy Storm. This is just crazy. Monster Reborn, Pot 
of Greed Raigeki, and two copies of Tribute to the Doom. Now, you might be wondering why I'm playing this over Fisher. Fisher is a simple one for one. Tribute to the Doom actually requires a card to be discarded. There's no Nobleman of Cross out until we get to Pharaoh's Servant. And one of the most difficult things to deal with is actually a set face down monster. If it's Man Eater Bug, if it's Magician of Faith, if it's Wall of Illusion, there's not a clean answer for it, but Tribute to the Doomed is that solution. Now, obviously, we could hit cards like Witch and Sangan. That's worst case scenario. However, if we have Robin Goblin established and we're trying to just continuously rip cards out of Joseph's hand, taking this minus one is not the end of the world because it will allow us to get in with our monsters, rip more cards out of his hand that these cards would be replacing anyway, and it gives us a clean out to some of these cards. Fisher is better in a lot of instances, I will say that, which is why I still have two in the side deck. However, I think Tribute to the Doomed on the set monsters is really going to shine in this matchup. For the trap cards, three Mirror Force. This is as good as it gets, and uh, one of the reasons why I'm not playing Summon Skull, Summon Skull is a little bit of high investment, but the thing is, Mirror Force is just going to be an absolute blowout, and uh, something we definitely have to play around. One thing that's interesting about my particular list is the fact that I can actually attack with these low attack power monsters, but Joseph's going to want to Mirror Force them because if Robin Goblin is active, he's not going to want to lose those cards out of his hand, so he might even just want a one-for-one one, something like a flipped man-eater bug just so he doesn't lose cards out of his hand. It's also risky because if he sets those cards, I could heavy storm at any moment. I Sure, I might lose my Robin Goblin, but honestly, if we're going to have this little dance going on of what cards he wants to keep in his hand and what he wants to set, I think that's well worth it. We're playing the three Robin Goblin. Again, this is a little bit high rolly, but I really want to play this card and see just how powerful it is. If it doesn't work out, we've got stuff like Woboku in the side deck that we can easily swap for it, but I think this card is really going to shine. Three Solemn Judgment. This is something that's actually really crazy in this format, uh, simply because we're only summoning about once per turn. This gives us protection from Heavy Storm. This gives us protection from Mirror Force, so that way we can ensure our attacks go through. We can protect Robin Goblin. We can negate the summon of monsters if we're already ahead in tempo. This card is just crazy. It's pretty much always going to be live, and uh, we might have some Solemn Judgment Wars on our hands. We'll have to see. And then finally, three copies of Trap Hole to round out our removal. For the side deck, this is really just kind of the substitute package here. In case the Robin Goblin plan doesn't work, we can take these out. We can take the Tribute to the Dooms out. Maybe some Solemn Judgments in the Wall of Illusion and swap in anywhere from 9 to 12 cards that we have here. Dark Elf, White Magical Hat, another 7 colored fish for another beater. Summon Skull, 2 Fisher, the 2 Swords. I don't think this card's as good with Heavy Storm in the format. Still not bad though. 2 Magic Jammer, 2 7 Tools, and 3 copies of Woboku. Woboku's particularly good because if Joseph does Heavy Storm, we can chain Woboku and we're safe for the turn. But Woboku doesn't actually proactively advance our game state. It just prevents us from dying that turn, which is why I'm not particularly excited about it in this deck, but it's going to be a fun time, that's for sure. It is time to duel. Here we are once again, Joseph, with Metal Raiders. We actually have a significant change to the card pool this time around. We're actually going to have to play Yu-Gi-Oh! How unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, I can't believe I'm back here again. Oh, God. Truthfully, I'm really happy that we get to play Yu-Gi-Oh! It feels like so much of our early games were decided by who drew the incredibly sacky three of. And while last time we got to play a little bit of a different style of gameplay, uh, it was also certainly a bit of a slog. It was, but a last episode I thought was really great. It definitely showed the depth of the LOB format. So anyone who hasn't seen that should definitely check it out. We are playing pre list Metal Raiders format though. So when you're talking about drawing sacky three ofs, I wouldn't, you know, I'd be careful with what you say because we could still have some instances where these games might go south real quick. You ready, buddy? I am. Um, hmm. Or am I? All right. God forgive me for doing this. Uh oh. Oh, oh no! I read, by my own paper read like a book. Easy, uh, easy, easy, God. easy. We are taking that first. Good luck, Joseph. I, that's what happens for betraying paper. You shouldn't have... Uh... <laughs> 
apparently. Paper Strat remains undefeated. Now, let's set the stage for our viewers real quick. Um, there's not really powerful three ofs like Confiscation in the format yet, but there's one that is still on the ban list that we have available at three, and that's Heavy Storm. Yes, Heavy Storm is going to be a big game changer. We also have access to three copies of Mirror Force, which although it's not on the ban list, back in the day, it was limited, and this is the only episode where we are going to get to play it at three copies until we get to, you know, 20... 14 or whenever it came off the list. I don't even remember. <laughs> Wait, Mirror Force is legal? Of course. So let's start Oh my things god, I don't have it in my deck. With Oh, I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so Please much. Please don't destroy my back row. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start things off with a set and let's go with one set and I will pass the turn. Ugh, I hate this. There's really only three things that could be. And realistically, there's only one thing. Uh, that's actually changed significantly this time around. I don't know about you. I'd say there's about seven things that could be now. <laughs> oh, that is what you would say? This may be over sooner than I thought. Uh-oh. You know what? I think that I'm going to go with a really early copy of Swords of Revealing Light. Joseph, what do you think this set card is? If you know me so I, well, what is this set card? I would give it a 100% chance of being exactly Wall of Illusion. <laughs> hey! Your intuition All was right. correct. Okay, he's going to set and pass. Swords of Revealing Light is quite the card. You know, as bizarre as this may seem, I think I might just pass the turn. Go ahead. I don't think it's bizarre as, at all. Uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same in this format, and uh, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of set pass this time around. Oh boy, okay. Let's take my turn here. Swords is on turn one. It will go to turn two after I pass the turn, and I'm really thinking about just passing again, but I will set another monster this time around. All right, I will draw for turn, and that's an interesting one. Turn two the on swords. The frustrating part about Wall of Illusion is that there's still nothing that trades with it super profitably. Yeah, it's... It's, it's such a frustrating card to deal with, surprisingly. All right, I'm going to get a little bit greedy and flip summon Witch of the Black Forest. Let's see if that set card is a Maneater bug or not. You would be correct. It is a Maneater bug. I will go ahead and pop your other set because Witch is perfectly fine. Bad news for you. It is a Sangan, and I think that's a sentence we're going to be saying a lot. I agree. You know, and this is perfectly fine in my eyes because I'm not going to obviously give you the trade that I know is in your favor, so I don't feel as bad about it. I'm going to get myself a Maneater Bug, go to main phase two, set a card, it could be anything, and pass it back to my good pal. Looks like you found your out to my Wall of Illusion. Hmm, that's actually a bit interesting. You know what? I'm game. So let's see how you deal with this wall if I deal with your Maneater Bug. I am going to activate Tribute to the Doomed. Uh, I was really hoping that you would miss this card. It is so absolutely powerful in this format where set cards are king. It's crazy because we don't have Nobleman of Cross out. I'm going to end my turn and your swords is going to expire. So Maneater Bug, Tribute to the Doomed, and swords are like the only efficient ways to deal with set monsters, unless you can, you know, correct me. So I guess uh, Regeki Dark Hole, but those are one of. I'm going to set a card and pass it back to you. Oh, it's going to be one of these games, eh? I will draw. Let's try to get a little bit aggressive here. I'm going to normal summon this copy of La Jin, the Mystical Genie of the Lamp. All good with me. Uh, let's Let's go ahead and send it and see if we can get into this witch. All right, why don't I take a cool 700 points of damage? I'll trigger the effect of witch. Sure. And we're going to go ahead and get a magician of faith to the hand. That's not what I wanted to see. I will go to main phase two. I will set a card and I will pass the turn. All right, I'll draw for turn. And this might surprise you. I'm going to normal summon a card face down in defense. <laughs> go ahead. I was about to say that would have been a uh, very heads up. So I meant uh, applaud that. I will draw for turn. There's a few ways this could go. Let's jam. I'm going to activate change of heart and take what I presume to be your magician of faith. That's so bad. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh wow. Yeah, you can have it. I will then flip up this copy of magician of faith and re-add change of heart back to my hand. Yep. Seems pretty good, right? It's okay. I'm really tempted to put this wall of illusion into attack position. Are you going to kill me with wall beats again? I mean, it's so funny to do that to you that I'm tempted. So if I do that, that's a total of 3,100 damage. You know what? I'm feeling it. Let's go for it. I'm going to switch wall to attack, and we're going to try to get in for that clean 31. All right. It is mirror force. <sighs> 
I'm gonna chain Solemn Judgment. You are on Solemn Judgment. My, how heads up of you. Yeah, I had to, you know, play around these mirror forces somehow. All right, I'll take that cool 31 in that case. Yep, main phase two, I will go ahead, set a card, and I will give you this Magician of Faith back as I pass the turn. Gee, thanks. <laughs> I figured at the very least you could have it back after I already used the effect. Just show me Sukiyomi, you know? All right, well, uh, I guess I have a couple of things to consider. Uh, I'll start by normal summoning a copy of Lajin, the Mystical Genie of the Lamp, and giving you a sweet target for that trap hole in your back row. Yep. Oh, what do you know? <laughs> well, let's see if we can read you just a little further. I'm gonna fire off a Raigeki. Ooh, that's... Hovering over that other solemn judgment, are we? I'm thinking about it. It could be a magic jammer. It could be magic jammer. <laughs> <laughs> Already normal summoned has Regeki. If I judgment now, I'll be at 2,000 life points. I'm pretty sure there's no way I conceivably die if that's the case. Because we don't have, like, any monster reborn targets or anything like that. Yeah, sure. I'll pay it. Hmm. That's interesting. All right. I know that you've got a, a change of heart in hand, don't I? You do. That doesn't complicate things for you in the slightest. <laughs> Well, here's my theory. You can't change of heart what's not on the field. Uh-oh. Would you say that that's correct? That w that would be correct to assume, yes. I'm going to normal summon a seven-colored fish. Okay. Then I'll attack your wall of illusion. Do you, do you forget you already summoned this turn? Yes, I did. <laughs> Oh, that's making this way more difficult. <laughs> Tough spot, huh? Tough spot indeed. I am going to activate Monster Reborn. Sure. Bring back Witch of the Black Forest. Okay. And proceed to battle phase walking into your wall. Okay, so I will take 100 damage and Witch will get bounced back to your hand. Sure. I'll set one card and pass it back to you. Let's draw. Hmm. I know you've got that Witch of the Black Forest in your hand. Let's attempt to swing into this Magician of Faith. Hmm. Let me check the text on one of my shot cards real quick. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll flip Mirror Force. Mirror Force for one. You're a 19, buddy. I gotta do what I gotta do. Yeah, I don't hate it. I'll be honest. Let's go to main two, and I will go ahead and set a card, and I will pass to you. I'll draw for turn. Very strange. You're at 19. You have a change of heart in hand. It is a huge punish if the set card is exactly Waboku, I believe. It could be Trap Hole. I'm gonna normal summon a Lodge In. Lodge In is fine. That's not what I wanted to hear. All right, let's let's think this out. I've seen zero Mirror Forces from you, two Solemn Judgments, two Trap Holes. You played Wabaku last time. That would be an insane turnaround. I'm at 42, but Change of Heart is one of the very few cards that can turn that life total into an OTK. Correct. I am gonna try it. You are gonna fall into the Mirror Force. Okay. Well, the good news is that shouldn't leave anything on my side of the field for you to change of heart. Correct. So that is the downside of the whole situation on my end, is that I cannot conceivably OTK you. Well, I, I suppose there's few possibilities that that could happen, but I will go ahead and set a monster and I will pass the turn. I'll draw for turn. Ooh, a fantastic rip. Uh, first, I'm going to start with a copy of Tribute to the Doomed, pitching that seven colored fish you saw earlier. <laughs> sure, you got my Magician of Faith. As expected. To tribute so broken in this format. And then going to think very hard about this. <laughs> Open board, Joseph. Open board. Open board indeed. Uh, realistically, how much can you accomplish with 800 life points? Let's find out. Oh, I can always pay for Solemn Judgment, so that's a relief. <laughs> Boo. Solemn Judgment is so good when you have 800 and so bad otherwise. I'm going to fire off a Swords of Revealing Light in main phase two. Okay. And then you are good to go. I will draw. That's an interesting one, but I don't think it's going to be enough. I will give you the first game. Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh, God! Joseph, this is a really hard fucking format. <laughs> <laughs> it's so difficult. There's so much you can play. I hate it. Yeah, I mean, this is just how, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! progresses, right? It just gets vastly more complex. And even just going from one core set to the next, like, Metal Raiders introduced so many cards into the equation that... 
Oh man, it's getting complicated. The amount of decisions just goes ever expandingly further. And uh, I'm gonna be going first. Let's see if we can uh, try to run it back here. Keep the win streak going, but you got me on the ropes. I'll say that. Well, good luck to you. My hand is, ooh, it leaves a lot to be desired. Well, I have pot of greed. So anything I do desire uh, is gonna be come straight to my hand. Well, congratulations. Uh, would you like to move to game three? Uh, <laughs> you know, that's where I just set the magician of faith and you just concede immediately. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and set myself a monster and set myself a back row. Go ahead. I know it's magician. You don't have to play around. I know it's magician. Then tribute to the doomed it. What are you waiting for? Uh, I'll, I'll do you one better. I'm going to swords of revealing light your man eater bug. So it is actually a wall of illusion once again. <laughs> Dang. That's so crazy. I would never have expected that from you. I had to out meta your play, pass. so. <laughs> <laughs> I will draw for turn. I like your sword so much, I'm going to go ahead and use one of my own. You've revealed the most powerful monster in my deck, Sangan. Okay. I'm feeling pretty good about that. So I'm not feeling good about the fact that swords is up. Let's see. How do we want to do this? I suppose I shall just set a monster and I'll pass the turn. That is turn one on your swords. All right. I'll draw for turn. Ooh, and that is a very interesting hit. I value these cards so highly, but I think they're in actuality just straight up bad. <laughs> I'm going to activate Tribute to the Doom pitching seven colored fish to hit your magician of faith here so you hit my witch of the black forest get Damn, punished. Punish. so we will now go into the deck here uh now i will grab the magician of faith thank you so much yeah, for getting yeah, it to my yeah, hand yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right i'll set one card and pass turn okay uh, turn one on my swords as I draw for turn. I will go ahead and set a monster and pass the turn. That's turn two on swords for you. All right. I'll draw for turn. Yo, how crazy would it be if you were next leveling me and that set card wasn't Magician of Fate? I mean, you have to find out. I guess I do. Uh, I'm not very interested in doing so, however. Uh, I'm just going to pass turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, turn two on my swords. I will draw for turn. I will go ahead and... I suppose I'll go ahead and set a card. And I think I'll actually go ahead and set another card card as well go ahead all right and to the grave goes my swords and i'll draw for turn you've set two cards here correct keen observation on your end <sighs> this is a lot to think about <laughs> that's why i love this this is so fun so there's zero chance you don't have a solemn judgment but what would you be willing to spend it on i think probably a summon skull is good enough bait hmm. thoughts on the summon i'll allow it that's fine i'm gonna activate the effect of sangan in that case sure i'm gonna search a copy of witch of the black forest don't you love that these cards can search each other <laughs> uh actually this is gonna surprise you i don't set one additional card and pass it back to you uh sir you summon the summon skull for turn no 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 no. that was my summon that's why his name is summon skull <laughs> You're, you're really itching to just summon more than once per turn, aren't you? <laughs> I'm used to modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Where is my striker dragon? I'll draw for turn. Unsurprisingly, I'm going to flip up Magician of Faith. It wasn't the card you thought it was, though. So we're going to grab a copy of Pot of Greed. We're going to fire off this copy of Pot of Greed, and we're going to draw ourselves two cards. Fine by me. I mean, I'm not super happy about it. <sighs> okay, I'm, I'm digging this. I'm going to Dark Hole. You want to run that one by me again? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to dark hole. I will gladly take your four for two. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, get to see another one of my cards, the Masked Sorcerer. You are on it. I'm going to trigger the effect of my set. That is perfectly here. fine by me. We'll add a Wall of Illusion to the hand. Sure. I'm going to normal summon a copy of La Jin. Mm -hmm. I am going to Monster Reborn your summon skull. Not ideal, but I understand. I am going to flip Robin Goblin. You have got to be <laughs> joking. <laughs> Battle phase, You're motherfucker. Robin let's go. Goblin <laughs> in heavy storm format? <laughs> Yeah. Gonna hit you for the full 43. We get to rip two cards out of your hand. We're gonna determine this solely by luck. We're gonna hit that one. And we're gonna hit this one. Let's just hit both cards out of your hand that were searched. <laughs> Ooh, Magician of Faith. Okay, so I know you still have Wall of Illusion. So there's only two cards that I currently do not know about. Interesting. I will just pass the turn. Go ahead. I suppose I'll draw. All right. I liked your uh, Dark Hole so much, I'm going to follow it up with one of my Nice own. top deck. Thank you. <laughs> I do my best. We'll set one card, and this. 
And I'll just go ahead and pass turn. Okay, sets Wall of Illusion, sets a back row. That's perfectly fine. I will go ahead and set a monster of my own, and I will pass the turn. Hmm. As always, there's only three or four things that set card could be. I know you're up a million to none on cards in hand, and this is just so miserable. I'm going to try for a lodge in. The punish here is exactly uh, Solemn Judgment, or the set card is Magician of Faith, I believe. And the summon is fine. No judgment, no trap hole. All right, we'll go for the uh, monster in that case. Hmm. It is, in fact an attack that you're declaring. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can do that too. How how correct you are. I'm going to attempt to mirror force this. Um, Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, and then you are good to go. All right, I will draw for turn. I will flip up this Magician of Faith. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Skilled player, huh? In fact, you are. I actually have an interesting decision here. Whether you're going to reborn kill me. Uh, that could potentially be one of the options. It's reborn dark hole pot of greed. Jesus. Yeah, we've got If you lose this game. <laughs> I know. I'm never going to hear the end of it. We have a lot of options. I am 99% convinced that's a wall of illusion. The question is, what other cards do you have in the back row? If I reborn your summon skull, the awkward part of that is the summon skull goes back to your hand hand, which isn't necessarily the worst, but I don't like it. There does exist a universe, however, that Magician of Faith can attack directly. Robin Goblin rips one of the cards out of your hand, so it could get rid of your other card or it gets rid of specifically Summon Skull. Alternatively, I take Pot of Greed, draw a couple cards, which also is really good, but is it good enough to beat Wall of Illusion? I might regret this. I'm going to take the Pot of Greed. Sure. And we'll fire it off. Do you have a response? I do not. Okay. Figure I would ask. Oh, that was literally exactly what I wanted. <laughs> okay, so that was the best case scenario. Maybe a little bit lucky, but uh, that's fine. I'm going to tribute to the doomed and- uh, Maybe a little bit lucky, we'll just, just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we'll lucky. just take care of this set monster here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Wall of Illusion has been disposed of. I'm just gonna go to battle, poke for 300 and uh, get rid of that last card in your hand. If you want a Mirror Force Magician of Faith, be my guest. Ooh, is tribute to the Oh, Doom I would have done it. <laughs> All right, main two, I think I'm going to go ahead and set myself a monster and set myself a card and I will pass to you. All right, I'll draw for turn. Interesting rip. I will set one and pass it back to you. As expected, I will draw for turn. I am going to flip up Man Eater Bug and pop your monster. Well, it's also a Man Eater Bug, so. That's a perfectly fair trade off to me. I will go ahead and uh, normal summon this copy of uh, Sangan. Do you have a response to that? I do not. All right, I will attempt to hit in and get. Uh, oh, actually, I will switch Magician of Faith to Defense. I'm not that greedy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking 1450. Correct. Here. 1450 will be the total. Robin Goblin triggers twice, but you have no cards in hand, and I shall pass the turn. Yikes. All right. I'll pass as well. Okay. I will draw once again. So, unfortunately, I can't kill you with this attack. So, I'm going to go to battle. Attempt to hit you for 1450. I am going to Mirror Force here. It's not pretty, but I don't have much left. I'm perfectly okay with that. I will trigger my Sangin. I'm going to get a Witch of the Black Forest. Sounds good. I will go to main two. I shall set myself a monster, and I will set a face down. Go ahead. All right, I'll draw for turn, and for the first time this series, I'll activate Heavy Storm. I think I'm going to Solemn Judgment this Heavy Storm. All right, sounds good. Nice draw. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go ahead and set this card and pass it back to you. Sure. I will draw, and I think this should be the end of the game with our good friend... Uh, uh, well, actually, let's Regeki first before anything bad happens. Oh, Regeki, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, normal summon wall of illusion, switch everything vertical, and this will be the end of the game. All right, let's go to game three, you <laughs> pot of greed cycler. <laughs> Are you kidding me, Alex? We have to play a third <laughs> one of these? You're out here playing 15 trap cards in the format with triple Heavy Storm, and now I have to pick up the pieces. And the best part is Heavy Storm hasn't resolved once, so that shows that I've this. come prepared. You're seeing Trap Master this set. <laughs> honestly, with the way I thought this would go, Trap Master honestly is kind of more viable than Heavy Storm in some cases. Oh, God. All right, we're going to set a card and pass. Go ahead. Oh, and you're going to be so happy about it, I imagine. I liked your move so much that I am going to do exactly the same thing. Go ahead. I will draw for turn. Uh, big shocker here. Uh, we're just going to play a little more set pass. Okay, I will draw. Yeah, I'm liking your style. 
Go ahead. <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can uh, flip out some early man-eater bugs here. I'm going to fire a Swords of Revealing Light. First card is a Sangin. Uh -huh. The second card is a Sangin. How interesting. <laughs> ah, so this is Yu-Gi-Oh! All right, well, I don't think there's a really clean way of resolving the Sangan disparity. Uh, so I'm going to flip my <laughs> Sangans to attack position and walk into your Sangans! You know what? I fully accept this. Uh, are you going to be taking out both? Yes, you are. So I will trigger so two bad. Sangans because this is not errated. In fact, it is not. Uh, gosh. Look what they did to my boy. Let's pick up a Magician of Faith and a Masked Sorcerer. Well, that's very interesting. I'm shocked to see your Unmasked Sorcerer at all, let alone searching it off of Sangan, but uh, I suppose I'll find out why very soon. You will find out why very soon, because I've got Heavy Storm. Unsurprising. I also have a dark hole to resolve the Sangan dispute of 2020. You gotta be kidding me. All right, all these <laughs> monsters to the graveyard. I'm gonna trigger the effect of Sangans in sequence, getting myself a Magician of Faith. Hey, declare your chain link, sir. Uh, well, both of these are optional. Ma well, how did Seagak rule back then? <laughs> uh, and let's get ourselves a uh, Witch as well. Sure. So you took uh, Magician of Faith Witch, correct? That's right. Okay, I will normal summon this Masked Sorcerer, and uh, I will get in for 900. You got it. And I will draw a card off of Mask Sorcerer's Effect. Main phase two, uh, I will just go ahead and set myself a card and I will pass the turn. All right, I'll draw for turn. Ooh, that's a weird one. I'm going to normal summon a Witch of the Black Forest. I'm going to Trap Hole. Trap holding my Witch, huh? All right, I'll trigger the effect of Witch then. Sure. We'll add a Lodge into hand. Sure. I'm gonna set one and pass it back to you. Okay, I will draw. Let's just go straight to the battle phase, hit him for another nine. Uh, not really what I want to be doing with this card, but I'll take it. <laughs> I don't ever think I would ever imagine a masked sorcerer getting hit by mirror force, but gotta love Here we know. are. Yep, main phase two. Let's see what you got in here. Double Sangan, which... Interesting. That's an interesting look at the graveyard there. Don't you worry about my looking at the graveyard. I will go ahead and set a monster, and I will set myself a face down. Go ahead. I'll draw for turn. Very strange rip from me. I'm going to normal summon a La Jin, the mystical genie of the lamp. La Jin resolves. Hmm. What are you worried about, Joseph? I don't play what Robin could, Goblin or anything. What could I possibly be worried about? All right, I I'll walk into your idiotic magician of faith. Is actually a Witch of the Black Forest. Even worse. So I will go ahead and get a search here. I'm going to pick up a man eater bug. I will pass turn back to you. Okay, I will draw. That's awkward. Well, let's fire off this copy of Fissure, take care of Mr. La Jin. Interesting. And uh, I will summon a La Jin of my own and we will beat in for 18. All right, sounds good to me. And we'll pass the turn. I'll draw. Hmm. I will set one card and pass it back to you. Okay, I will draw. Oh, and that is probably the best top deck imaginable. Ladies Two and games. gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, that is why this card is banned. <laughs> now, how do we want to do this? I know you have a Magician of Faith in your hand because you searched it off of the uh, great Sangan impasse of 2020. So let's fire off this Regeki. You're telling me you drew Pot of Greed, Dark Hole, and Raigeki again. <laughs> oh, it was Wall of Illusion. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, uh, let's go ahead and start off by hitting in for 18. Uh-huh. And I will go to main two. I will set myself a monster, and I will set myself a back row and pass the turn. All right, I will draw. Uh, let's lead with a heavy storm here. Uh... Saving for the two for one, as per typical. Trying for it, at least. I'm going to judgment. Interesting. Well, Show me the second heavy again. storm. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if you want to take out Mirror Force that badly, I'm okay with it. <laughs> sure. Oh, God. This is such a miserable scenario. Uh, my kingdom for a tribute to the doomed. This is a tough one, too. La Jin's got yeah. you on a two-turn clock if all things keep going according to plan, so. He's a big boy. I'm going to normal summon La Jin and walk into your La Jin. I don't hate that, actually. Sure. Wow. Now I know why you really didn't like that play. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. I fully can empathize with that. I will set and pass. Go ahead. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, okay. Shoot. Uh, I guess I will also set and pass. Go ahead. Okay. 
I will draw. I'm going to start by flipping this man-eater bug and popping what I hope to be is your Magician of Faith. Oh, man. Thank oh, you, miserable. Justice. Okay, let's flip up this Magician of Faith now and get back the one and only Pot of Greed. Yup. You want to solemn judgment this? Oh, do I ever. All good. <laughs> I, I will draw a couple cards. So you still have a back row, which is fine, I suppose, but not for long. I'm going to heavy storm. And to the grave goes my mirror force. It must be nice to have 10 cards in your hand at all times. Right, I think so. La Jin's going to come down. We are going to hit in for that sweet 2550. All right, and I am at 950. Main phase two. I will just pass the turn. Go ahead. All right, we're going to set two and pass the turn. Okay, I will draw for turn. Let's fire off a Swords of Revealing Light. Let's see what this is. It is a Witch of the Black Forest. Okay. So as it currently stands, I cannot kill you with what I have on board. That means the worst case scenario right now is that you have a third Mirror Force in the back row. A third Mirror Force would mean that I lose everything. But I have sword, so it's not that bad. Trap Hole is a card. Waboku is also a card. I think those are like truly the only cards I'm worried about the most. I haven't seen a single judgment out of you, I think the entire game. Two Mirror Forces are already gone. What are the odds that you have the third? I think I'm gonna do the Discipline play and I'm going to go to Battle Phase and attack with Lajin. Uh, yeah, that's fine. You get uh, your Witch Search. I will get my Witch Search. What do I want exactly off of Witch <laughs> It's nice because it basically tutors the whole deck, <laughs> except for, funny enough, Wall of Illusion. <laughs> That's the one I want. Well, maybe uh, if you didn't have all those Sand Gans die for nothing at the beginning of the game. <laughs> apparently. Yeah, I'm going to get a, um, I'm going to get a Lodge in. At least you have that. That's not the worst. I'm going to attempt to get in here for 750. That's fine, yeah. I'm assuming those are going to go through. Let me see the Hinatama. Yeah, I mean, Sparks will even finish you off at this point. <laughs> I will set and pass. Go ahead. This is rough. Uh, okay. I'm in a position where I can't really afford to play around anything. I'm going to normal summon a lodge in. No back row, no response. And then I'm going to monster reborn to bring back my wall of illusion. Walling up, I see. You are good to go. Turn one on swords. I will draw. Well, you need exactly mirror force not to lose here. So I'm going to basically put you on having it. I'm going to flip this man-eater bug and pop your wall of illusion. Oh, I want to be mad that you have everything, but you activated Pot of Greed eight times this game. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's just how it happens. It was a bluff. Okay, and game four goes to Simo once again. 4-0, and oh, ladies and gentlemen. Easy clap. Uh, You know, I, I really don't have much to say about this set other than drawing Pot of Greed wins you the game in the <laughs> Magician of Faith format. I mean, you have what? A total of, I don't know how many Faith you were on. I was on two. You were on two Faith? Are you fucking with me, dude? What? Were you playing three? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's an argument for three Faith, of course, but I don't know. You still have to actually get to the good spells. And so in that case, you have Sangen and Witch to search you the Faith anyway. So I feel like if Sangen and Witch were like limited, then like, yeah, there might be an argument for more Faith. I don't know. You're telling me that the deck that I lost to is on main deck Robin Goblin, <laughs> two Magician of Faith. I, and I didn't see, I saw what? Heavy Storm game three only? from you? I believe so, yes. I was playing three heavy. I'll give you that. Oh, Jesus. What a nightmare. I felt really good about this deck. I certainly wasn't expecting you to be playing like 14 traps. That kind of came out of left field for me. In testing, I even found Mirror Force to be kind of bad. And I know that sounds like sacrilegious, but so many games were decided by this kind of crap where like La Jin is a threat but you are losing the game over the course of 15 turns because Magician of Faith loops Pot of Greed, not because your opponent Monster Reborns six times and gets in with Summon Skull over and over again. Right, and that's why Tribute to the Doomed is just so powerful in this format, just because being able to remove the Magician of Faith so that they can't loop anything, to be able to stop Maneater Bug before it can flip, uh, to be able to even take out the Wall of Illusions. Like, the Wall of Illusions are actually still really annoying for us to deal with. And uh, while Fissure can do the job, Fissure 
Major requires us to have already attacked into wall once. We're attributed to the doomed at the cost of a card. We can just take care of it immediately. So, uh, were you on three of this? Uh, of tribute? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I was only playing two tribute, too. So, you can uh, go you ahead can, and... You uh, can't keep telling me these things. <laughs> oh, my God. Next, you're going to be like, yeah, I boarded into Raigeki. Yeah, I just didn't think it was very good game one. <laughs> Oh How does it feel gosh. to lose to the superior duelist, Joseph? It, it, you really are. You really do have heart of the cards. That's the only <laughs> explanation I can I can fathom for this. So uh, pot of greed can't be banned fast enough. When when did that finally happen? Uh, it's not for a while, my friend. We're still gonna have pot Jesus. for a very many episodes. But yeah, so I actually boarded out the Robin Goblins. I actually had it in my hand game one. I think I drew it for the turn that I knew you had checkmated me, and so I just opted not to show it to you. And uh, my plan was if you didn't know about Robin Goblin, or if you were foolish enough to play into it for some reason or another, which there were plenty of opportunities for you to do so. My plan was as soon as you saw Robin Goblin to basically just board out of it entirely because then it's just the lingering threat that you know I might be playing it would have you hesitate in some instances to maybe want to attack even into just set defensive monsters. Uh, that was, I just wanted to play the psychological warfare game with you and I'm not sure if it worked, but uh, it was really fun to rip all those cards out of your hand game too. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Robin Gumblar for real. Uh, I don't know how much I buy that in a format where Mirror Force is legal, which is already so massively punishing if you attack in. Um, well, the thing and, like, is, get wiped for it. well, the my logic was, what's interesting about you saying that is because Robin Goblin makes all of the little monsters like Magician of Faith and Man Eater Bug actually threatening because they're threatening to rip a card out of your hand. The life point is it's completely negligible at that point. So my thinking was you would actually be incentivized to waste mirror forces on these little monsters instead of wasting them on more impactful cards like La Jin or when I have to go for game shots. And so by doing so, then if I'm making you use those mirror forces early so you can preserve your hand, I'm perfectly fine with that because once this Magician of Faith and Man Eater Bug is flipped, it basically serves no purpose anyway. So I'm just wanting to maximize as much value as I possibly can out of them. Yeah, I think there is... Ugh, it, it is just so rough to be even playing the meager pieces of spot removal we have. Cards like Fissure are exceptionally weak, I found, this format. Uh, I actually was only on it in the board just because Maneater Bug itself is hard to get rid of. Committing a monster to the board is just asking to be punished for it. And uh, uh, the, the end result is this absolutely weird format where, like, the one unresolved Jin just takes over the game. I opted to play the one Fissure instead of the third Tribute to the Dune because I figured if I do get in to a scenario where I am staring down a La Jin or a Summon Skull or something just large and I don't want to have to two for one it, I figured that that was like a, a fair enough like compromise. Obviously, you know, if you know don't you don't agree with two ofs, that's perfectly okay. But I felt like it would come up enough. And in the instance where I like fissured your La Jin early on in this game three, that was actually exactly the type of situation I was thinking of. I don't think I had drawn tribute to the doomed at that point yet, but uh, I didn't want to have to sacrifice the card if I didn't want to. So that was the theory. You weren't playing just Judgment at all? Uh, I was playing it in the board, but I, I really actually don't like Judgment in old formats. Uh, to those of you who are unfamiliar, Judgment is straight up legal in GOAT format and sees just about zero play. It turns out if your entire game plan is to like one for one your opponent over and over again, just straight up paying 4,000 life points to effectively one for one is not fantastic. It's really good to hit blowout cards, but like the blowout cards you're trying to hit are like Dark Hole, Pot of Greed, Raigeki, stuff like that. And anything meaningful into a set couple of back row cards is going to have to chew through a heavy storm first. In my testing, effectively all Solemn Judgment was, was like preserve the second one of your two back row at the cost of half your life points. And like the alternative to that is just play less trap cards. Right, exactly. And honestly, had I not been going the Robin Goblin route just to kind of spice things up a bit, I probably wouldn't have played Judgment at all. I pretty much played it because most most of the times, and that's what's so awkward about Robin Goblin, is that you want to only have like one card set in the back row so that Heavy Storm gets uh, just mitigated in terms of its effectiveness. But the issue is with Robin Goblin, you can't like set Goblin and like Trap Hole or like Mirror Force because then that's like an easy two for one. They're going to Heavy Storm it every time. Judgment, however, makes it so that you not only have the protection from Storm, but if you have the tempo that you're ahead and you're already punishing them with Robin Goblin, you can take out their summon. You can stop yourself from getting Raigeki. You can keep your board presence. So for the purposes of like my deck specifically, I think judgment actually makes sense. But had I not gone that route and played a deck that was more, uh, I would say probably more streamlined like yours was, I probably wouldn't have played judgment at all except in the side deck. But of course, you know, like a streamlined consistent deck doesn't really matter if you get to see like two thirds of it every game. Uh, <laughs> Is that a little salt 
I'm hearing? Is that some uh, salt? Uh, I can't believe this card is as legal for as long as it was. I can't believe people thought that Pot of Greed was something they wanted uh, to include in Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, it features so often in the anime, and in reality, it just leads to these miserable game states where you're so behind. I don't know yeah. how people play GOAT format. Yeah, it definitely... That Pot of Greed, I don't think, was necessarily game-changing. Also, I'm thinking of the second game. I don't remember. But I think the extra cards were just nice at that point. But yeah, I do agree with you that while it does offer this sort of... Of, let's say comeback mechanic in the instance of if your back's to the wall so many times it's just a card that if someone's already ahead it's just going to punish the opposing player even further beyond yeah can't can't disagree with you anymore there pal i think pot of greed <laughs> is good in literally every scenario and um especially in the format where you can play magician of faith at three which i think we're exiting pretty quickly yeah uh next format we should be having the uh limited list that accompanied metal raiders so that will be checking some of the cards mirror force i believe goes to one i believe I believe Sangan and Witch of the Black Forest go to two apiece. Heavy Storm, I believe, also gets semi-limited as well. So our decks are going to be yeah, slimmed down a little bit, but they're just going to basically be replaced with different cards, which is fine. And uh, Wait, we might they be change all of it to two ofs. Are you kidding I think, me? I you're think fine. So. You don't have to change anything. Your deck's <laughs> legal as is. I knew you were going to say that. But yeah, what's yeah, also yeah. interesting is that we might even incorporate Mechanical Chaser just to show how powerful of a card Chaser was back in the day. And uh, I think that'd be really exciting for people to see how 50 attack points actually makes all the difference in the world. Well, uh, there are some things that still fails to get over, things like Wall of Illusion, but the ability to threat like any possible beater in the game is just absolutely bonkers. And I believe at the time the card was worth about three or four thousand dollars. I mean, that's probably a good approximation. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't hold a candle to the all-powerful Dark Elf or Jurai Gumo, but uh, in terms of normal summonable monsters that don't have horrific drawbacks, yeah, Yes, that is correct. <laughs> so guys, that's going to wrap it up for episode four of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Hashtag Team Simo, hashtag Team MBT. We're starting to diversify a little bit and you might get to see more of these interesting strategies that neither of us are going to be uh, taking necessarily. We might have completely diametrically opposed uh, decisions. And this is, I think, the beginning of that. So I really can't wait to see what we come up with next. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and we will see you next time.